to the holy city to celebrate Passover. In the midst of Roman oppression, there is a sense of joy and anticipation in Jerusalem. Thousands have gathered on the walkways and streets of this ancient city. They are here to commemorate the great works of God among his people. Yet many seem to have lost sight of the significance of this event. Many come to fulfill traditional religious obligations. Some come to enjoy the renewal of friendships. All seem to anticipate the festive atmosphere, but no one could have imagined how different this week would be. gift for merchandising. Everybody knows that. I live to help you, Gab. Stand back and watch, Benjamin. You'll be amazed at how easy this really is. Good afternoon, Gab. It's a pleasure to be doing business with you again. I missed our little business dealings lately. I've missed them too. Oh, you remember Gomer, my wife? Samuel! It's been a while but not nearly long enough. You haven't been avoiding me, have you? Why, oh, avoid you? No, Benjamin, I have just been in another city and we just haven't had a chance to get back into town to come talk to Gavin. Oh, never mind. Enough. I have bread to sell. For a profit? Gad, you had better come home with more than just your sandals this time. It's still quite chilly at night. Good day. She's a treasure, that one. A latka among latkes. What can I do for you, Samuel? Why, the usual, Gad. I'm here to do business. And what kind of business might you have in mind? All right, Gad. Here's my best offer. I'll have all of the supplies that you need delivered by the end of next month. But you must make sure to have all the textiles finished and ready for me by the end of the following month. No later. We can still work on a fair price, but the timing must be first. 
how many times do I have to tell you? I'll have it done. I'll have it done. That is what you said last time, Gad, and it took an extra two weeks. I told you. My daughter had my first grandson. We had to celebrate. Celebrate? For two weeks? He's my first grandson. And the apple of my eye. You should see. He's so handsome. He looks just like me. Poor boy. What's that? I said, what joy. Congratulations, Dad. But you still put me behind schedule. I had to put off my other customers while I waited for you. And you can't stay in business without prompt and reliable service. I'm sorry. Everybody knows that. I'm sorry. I promise I won't be having any more grandchildren born. Good. Then we're agreed? Yes. Uh, depending on the discount. You heard my wife. I must come home with a little more profit this time. The last time she nagged me so much, I decided to sleep on the roof till she quit. That lasted two weeks. Two weeks. How about 20%? 20%? Gad, <laughs> I think you've been sampling the wine a bit too freely in the marketplace. Now, Samuel... No, impossible. That's way too much. 20%. I can do it for five, and that's all. Five? Can't you do any better than that? After all, my life is on the line. I need 15. Impossible. But... For you, my friend, and I don't want you to have to sleep on the roof again for two weeks. I can do it for 10%. Ten? Oh, 10%. That's a very generous offer this day and age. Everybody knows that. Well, all right. Good. I'll be back at the end of the month. I look forward to seeing you then. Perhaps next time I'll bring my grandson, and you can see just how handsome he is. It's uncanny how much like me he looks. He doesn't stand a chance with that nose. What's that? I said, I bet you're amazed at how he grows. <laughs> Shalom, Gab. Shalom, Samuel. So do you think you'll really have it ready next time? Not a chance. <laughs> but at least this time when he's late, I'll have a better discount. What about our other customers? Uh, they'll be happy to get my fine textiles, even if they are a little bit later than common. Will all of our, all of our dealings going to be like this one? <laughs> no. Some will be better, some will be worse, but none will be as amusing. And the poor man even married to see Caesar's twin sister over here. You know, I think if it weren't for her, I could have gotten away with a mere five percent. Yeah, no matter. We'll, we'll still make a profit in all cases, and life will be good. <laughs> well, there's much to the business of doing business, Samuel. I do appreciate you granting me an apprenticeship. I'm glad to do it for you. I could have used someone to help me out when I was first getting started, but I didn't have anyone, so I'm happy to do it for you. You just pay attention, and you'll be rich someday. Now, let's see about visiting some other clients. But it's almost sundown, and it's the Sabbath. But if we hurry, we can still get a good deal. But aren't you afraid that the sun will set before we close the deal? Then we close it in the dark. I'm behind schedule on this trip. We shouldn't have spent so much time in, in Bethany and Jericho, but business was just so profitable I couldn't bear to leave too soon. But we're not supposed to work on the Saturday. I, I know. I know that, Benjamin. I went to Hebrew school a long time ago, but now I need to make a living. But isn't it the law? <laughs> One of the things I learned a long time ago, Benjamin, is that there are big laws and there are little laws. And that is a little one. If I had to quit working at the end, every time the sun went down at the end of the week, I'd be broke. Really, it'll be fine. You know, let's get back to work. Fine, but it's important that we finish soon. We will, Benjamin, we will. Will we be in the city for a while? We'll be here for a week or so. Why do you ask? Well, I've just been thinking through my plans for the Passover celebration. Passover? Well, yes! Don't tell me that you forgot that next week is Passover. I must have. No matter. Let's, let's continue. Let's get back to work and we'll finish up quickly. And I see some new faces in the crowd. I wonder what they're selling. It's always good to check out the competition. Everybody knows that. How 
was the bread. Oh, wonderful as always. I can always count on you when I need to make a good impression. How was your Sabbath? Oh, it was wonderful. We celebrated with my daughter's family. Oh, good morning, Lyra. Oh, you're busy as always. I'll talk to you soon. Have a good week. Show home, Mr. Hello. And what can I do for you, Kavira? Well, good morning, Summer. I need some uh, bread. I have family from you, which is coming to Jerusalem. I have family from you from all over. Oh, my. Well, this is my finest, fresh this morning, and only ten farthings a loaf. for myself if these stories are true. In fact, I'm meeting a friend there who's experienced a miracle of Jesus firsthand. I want to find out more about this man. Will you go with me? Yes, but only to keep you from believing everything you hear. Leah! Yeah. Take, uh, take over for me, but whatever you do, don't give Gad today's profits. Men are the worst managers of money. Everybody knows that. <laughs> Benjamin, and how was your Sabbath celebration? It was very good, Samuel, and yours? It was fine. This is going to be a very profitable week, Benjamin. I can feel it. Now let's move on to our next stop. Well, I wonder what's going on. I don't know, but something sure is. Excuse me, can you tell me what's happening, where was going, why I hold a sudden rush? How did you hurt? Oh, Jesus, I thought it was. Jesus? Oh, <laughs> 
excitement is in the air. It is Passover, a time to remember the divine miracles that led the children of Israel and Moses out of slavery in Egypt. The years of wandering in the desert are now a distant memory. It is a time for thanksgiving. It is a time for praise. It is a time to bring sacrifices before the Lord. It is a time to remember His goodness. Ooh. 
to me. responsibility to take care of her. Oh, how I love that little one. I've taken care of her as though she were my own. Well, just before her 12th birthday, she became very ill. She had a fever that lasted for days. No matter what I tried, I could not make her well. Jairus, who had heard of Jesus' miracle, went to the teacher to plead for help. But while he was gone, she died in my arms. We were devastated. We sent word to Jairus that she was dead, and Jesus came anyway. He told us she was only sleeping. No one believed him. I certainly didn't believe him. I mean, she had stopped breathing long before. I had held her lifeless body in my arms. But then the most incredible thing happened. He reached out and touched her arm, and he spoke, saying, little girl, get up. And she did. Do you mean to say that he raised her from the dead with a mere touch of his hand? Oh, yes. It was a miracle. In fact, there she is now, walking with her mother. Rachel! Rachel! She was dead. But now she lives. It was like a touch of heaven. Each step he took will leave the mark of heaven. Each word he spoke would have eternal worth. He 
Each life he touched would feel his mighty power. The Son of God began his work on earth. The lonely lives would find a friend to listen. The wounded hearts would feel his gentle hand. I'd be doing a lot better if I hadn't been robbed, Samuel. But you should have seen it. They caught the thieves. They recovered my property. Well, that is good news. I'm here to do business with you, Jeremiah. It's been a while since you placed an order, and I'd like to change that. Well, I could see that from your eyes. But, you know, the last time I ordered from you, the carpets were late. Yep, I remember. I had a little trouble with my supplier. Well, how can you expect me to do business if I can't count on your timely delivery? I've asked myself that same question, Jeremiah, and that's why I'm willing to offer you an extra discount this time around. An extra discount? Now that would be good. How does 7% sound? 7%? That would be bad. Oh, 7%? That, why, that's the industry standard. That is a very generous offer this day and age. Everybody knows that. Are you sure that's the best you can do for me? I was thinking more along the lines of 10%. No, no, I guess I could do 
8% if you give me an extra week to get things to you. Agreed. Agreed. Yes. What do you plan to do for Passover, Jeremiah? The usual. And you? Oh, it's always big for me. In fact, that's why Benjamin and I are trying to uh, sew up a few things so we can get on with the big occasion. Oh, oh, oh. Samuel, you're always one with a joke to fit the occasion. By the way, Benjamin is my new apprentice. Nice to meet you. He is going to be a star in textile someday. Well, good for him. Oh, no, good for all of us. Why, it will be just like having another one of me calling on you. Oh, that's all I need. With all the business that you're doing, you're going to need both of us. Why, the marketplace seems especially busy today. Well, I think it's because of this new teacher. Have you heard about this man, Jesus? No, not really. Well, only that he may be the Messiah. <laughs> I don't know about that, then. Actually, I've heard that from many people that they've even seen miracles. But the Messiah? I don't think so. It could be true. Well, we'll have to wait and see. I've heard that he's been teaching his followers for three years now. He just came into the city. That was him? Yes, we saw him pass by. Well, all I know is I wouldn't want to be in his shoes. Standing over here, I hear the Pharisees are very unhappy with him. You don't want to be on their bad side. Everybody knows that. How so? They could have him killed. Why? They could have him killed because of challenging their authority. That's why. Can they do that? No. Not for just challenging their authority. He would have to do something far worse. Like, oh, well, like commit blasphemy. Nobody's going to claim that they're God if, if they know that that's going to get them killed. Now, my guess is that he'll continue on with this and then when things get really tough and start to threaten him, he'll abandon this crusade or whatever he's on and they go protect himself. You know, no one's going to die for a false cause. Everybody knows that. Samuel's right. Nobody's going to die for something unless they know it's true. Until next time, Jeremiah. Until next time. In the midst of revelry hangs the shadow of tragedy. There are those in power who have taken advantage of their fellow Jews who have come to offer their sacrifices to the, to the Lord. Greed has overcome goodness. Treachery and dishonesty have entered the very halls of the temple. God's people are being cheated. temple with your greed. Is it not written my house is a house of prayer for all nations? <laughs> Get out. Go. Be gone. Go. This is my father's house.
But what they were doing was wrong. The temple was not built to be a place to hold business. Jesus had every right to be angry. You have a point. The poor souls who labored to lay the last tomb of the temple, stone of the temple, would turn over in their tombs if they saw it being used in such a manner. That's why I told God to stay out of the temple courts. He'd only get himself into trouble over there. Everybody knows that. Our forefathers would never have defiled the temple in such a manner. To them, is a holy place. I think we have since lost our reverence for God. But I still don't understand that man, Jesus. But we don't have to understand him. Just watching him is enough. I'm convinced he is sent from God. In fact, I believe he is the awaited Messiah. Oh. oh. And what would you know? That's a pretty bold statement coming from someone like you. I know what you're who I am, what I've done, but I also know what I have experienced. What have you experienced?
ago they were calling for him as their king now they are calling into question just what his kingdom would mean the religious leaders recognize their opportunity to undermine and destroy him and begin their plot of lies deception and bribery 
Though the tension is mounting, his followers seem unaware that the completion of his earthly ministry is near. And so he gathers his friends together for one last evening to share the Passover feast. Burdens of 
finish what you've set out to do. that the writings of the prophets long ago might be fulfilled this very day. <laughs> Had a good day, Benjamin. Profitable transaction, a good meal, and now we can rest. Yes, I'm glad I came along on this trip. There's nothing quite like seeing things with your own eyes. I can tell you and tell you how to close the deal, but until you actually see things firsthand, you won't entirely get it all. There's nothing quite like being right in the middle of all the action. <coughs> Everybody knows that. Yes, but I'm glad I got a glimpse of Jesus. Jesus. You're still thinking about him? Well, actually, he came to my village early on. And I've just been following the news about him as much as I can. What is it that you find so fascinating about him? Well, I can't quite put my finger on it. But there is something different about him. Different? He's just another teacher, a, a rabbi. Oh, no. He's much more than that. I've listened to a lot of teachers and rabbis. But... Very unique. He speaks with great authority. Well, you know, know more of that than I. It's been a while since I've paid attention to the teachings of the rabbi. Well, I was pretty surprised that you had forgotten it was time for Passover. I just forgot. Well, see, that's what I don't understand. Passover is one of the most important celebrations of all year long. How can you forget that? I was busy. Well, anyways, there's just something about Jesus. I wonder if he really might be the Messiah. That would be pretty hard to believe. It's like I said earlier. When things get really tough and things start to threaten his life, he'll abandon this crusade and go protect himself. There's very little worth losing your life over. Everybody knows that. But what if he is who they say he is? The Messiah? Yes. That would be pretty unbelievable. But what if he is? I don't know. I'd have to see for myself. I'd have to look him into the eyes to know for sure. You can tell a lot about a person by looking into their eyes. Everybody knows that. <laughs>
with one word, he could call all of heaven to his defense. But instead, he stands alone, defenseless. He comes face to face with an evil conspiracy of false accusations, ridicule, and injustice. His first trial is before religious leaders who had set this whole sinister plot into motion. More than the foolish questions, didn't they know that he was their king? Worthy of more than to hear their insults, false accusations, and murmurings. From his father's temple to Pilate's hall, from Herod's throne, and back to Pilate, as the circle of deceit continues to turn on and on and on. More than to stand in judgment, try to record a dishonesty. Were they a more than the senseless rumors part of an evil conspiracy? The crowd that once cheered for him now calls for his death. Finding no fault with him, Pilate yields to their demands and tries to wash his hands of an innocent man's blood. Hearing the crowd screaming, crucify. Were they a more than the senseless verdict? Sending God's Son to the cross to die. Were they a more than the road to Calvary? Were they a more than the
did the major, when he took his first steps, when he played as a child, and when he reached out his hand to comfort and heal, could Mary, the mother of Jesus, have imagined it would all come to this? Ah. Uh -huh. 
came up and told us about Jesus, my heart is telling me that he's real. before the sun sets. No, I, I don't think we'll make that one, Benjamin. But we can't wait till tomorrow. It's the Sabbath. <laughs> then we'll leave it for the next time we're here in the city. Next time? That's not like you, Samuel. I'm surprised that you'd give up the opportunity for profit. I've made more than I need on this trip, and I need to take care of a personal matter. Personal? May I ask what? I need to go see Jesus. Well, I don't understand. After the crowd passed by yesterday, I followed them. They put Jesus on trial, and they convicted him of blasphemy. I was there too, Samuel. I saw it all. You were right. When I looked at him, I could tell that what you had said was true. He is different. For an instance, I saw a man who was not after his own agenda, but something much more important. I followed my, my own desires and, and selfishness and looking for success and profit. But Jesus was willing to give of himself and his life for others. I've never met anyone willing to do that before. Well, they hung him on a cross on a hill outside the city walls. But he won't still be there on that hill. It doesn't make much sense, does it? But I must go to where Jesus died. He died, and for what? He believed in something so strongly that he was willing to give of his life. It must have been something of great significance. And significance is the one thing that my life lacks. Things may never be the same again, Benjamin. I believe that he may truly be the Messiah. I do too. I can't guarantee you what the future holds for me, for my business, or for you. I know. And that's all right with you? 
Yes, if Jesus is who we think he is, everything will change. Not only in our lives, but for the entire world. For once the Messiah comes, nothing will ever seem the same again. Everybody knows that. Come, I'll take you to the cross. It may seem like all of this occurred on a hill too far away, too far removed from our lives to speak to us and our need for so great a sacrifice. We cannot stand in the distance and expect to experience the magnitude of the cross. We must draw near. We must face what we do not understand. We must confront the ravaged, spotless land to gain just a glimpse of our stain of sin. The cross cannot be explained away. The cross cannot be ignored. The cross cannot be stripped of its cruelty and shame. The cross cannot and will not be denied. The invitation stands. Come to the place of mercy and grace. It is the way of the cross that leads us home.
a hill far away stood an old rugged cross where the dearest was slain. And I love that old cross where the dearest and best for a world of lost sinners was slain. A distant hill, our greatest shame. Cross this dead one bears my name, but on the cross there hangs a lamb consumed and lost.
never be anything quite like the resurrection. Nothing comes close to the impact and importance of Christ walking out of that garden tomb. All that death had shattered, the resurrection restored. All that sin had tarnished, the resurrection renewed. No words ever spoken have impacted the world quite like a proclamation on that first glorious Easter morning. He is not here. He is risen.